and welcome back. So we're going to get into this week's episode of The Real Housewives of Atlanta. So the first thing I want to discuss is Kenya's public service announcement about domestic violence. So I'm going to start at the top with it. When she asked Sheree to do that PSA with her, she asked Sheree in a manner of, we're going to do this together. But when it came down to doing it, she she didn't want no co-pilot, no partner, no co-producer, nothing like that. She simply wanted Sheree to say something in the PSA like everybody else. She didn't want her to help her with it per se like she presented it. But we all should have known this. We learned when uh, Kim was on there, the black Kim, Kim, not uh, Kim Fields, not the Kim Zosiak. When she was doing her commercial, Kenya doesn't do help. Y'all remember that? When she was doing Cynthia's commercial, she wasn't going to work with Kim. But anyway, so we get into the PSA. I'm going to tell you, I think this group of women can really impact a lot of lives. I think that seeing these women do this service this public service announcement are going to help so many women because I feel like a lot of women need to see that realistically real women go through this every day. It's not just them. It's women that you would never imagine go through it because you know, to a lot of people, these housewives live perfect lives why people think that, I don't know, but they just assume that. But I really think this is going to impact them. Shamia's story. All the stories were great to me. Like, because they're so realistic. It's things that happen to women every day. Just like in Sh Shamia's situation. She was dating a guy. Everything had been going good, going fine. Till all of a sudden, he up. He got insecure. He thought that she was cheating because... He just had issues and she was just like, yeah, if you want to think that, yeah, whatever. And he hit her. That's not okay. And, and women need to realize that. And out of all the stories, the most touching to me was Miss Barbara, Cynthia's mom, because that is stuff that is happening right now as I speak. Some woman somewhere is going through that or someone knows somebody that's living that and going through that right this second that story so needed to be heard and told especially from women that are on tv in the spotlight that's more realistic that we can relate to because these are women like i said we can relate to because we we see them so much you feel like you have things in common with them like you know these women and i feel like it's really gonna help nini um story she had told her story the first season of this show i'm trying to think i want to say it was the first season of the show she told her story very touching story all of them um kenya's abuse um her kenya's situation she said when she was 16 years old she dated somebody 11 years older now i know kenya said she had a troubled childhood and she didn't grow she grew up kind of rough and it wasn't all that great but where was her guardian? Because in this show, she said her aunt was almost, was always her mother. No, her grandmother raised her. When, when the grandmother passed away, she said her grandmother was what was her mother. And then I guess the aunt stepped in here and there, whatever. Where were, were either one of these people that she was out dating somebody that old to me i feel like when she was dating somebody that old and and when young girls do that they are looking for father figures the only times a, a man or a woman date somebody that much older than them they are looking to replace either a mother or a father and that's not okay i'm glad kenya came through i'm glad all the women came through their stories and survived because it was that's just horrible. I like how she did the script for the show. I'm going to tell you, Kenya's calling is to be behind the camera. Now I see why she had a production company. And, and all, honestly, I wish her production company would be more more successful because her, her her producing stuff like this, I mean, it's really, it was great. And I I think that 
I would like to see more stuff like this from her because I just feel like that's just, just what her calling is. So let's see. Candy killed it. I like what Candy said at the end. That was perfect. Who else was it? Cynthia's mom. Oh, Cynthia's part was perfect. I like how Portia came in like a boss. She was very mature. She hugged, kissed all the ladies. And, and, and Portia is just maturing in her own right. She's more mature than she was when she first came on this show. And she come here, she's like, this is a serious situation. It's not time for being shady, arguing, and being sad. And I love how she came in there in a professional way. And she hugged and kissed each lady. She did her part. That was very nice of her and i like how she just be over it she moving on from it and a lot of people say you know the thing she's so dumb and stupid but she do put it out there like she's not dumb or stupid she just don't comprehend some things i'm gonna put it like that anyway sheree first of all sheree i'm proud of you for showing up because the reason I'm sitting here in front of this camera is what happened to Sheree. I got rear-ended by somebody roughly a little over a year ago, and it took my career. I thought that it was something that was going to be minor. I had no idea it was going to basically ruin my life. Um, I got rear-ended. I got hit so hard, I was knocked unconscious. And when I tell you the pain of your back being messed up, here I am. It's like a year and a half after my wreck and I'm still suffering from whiplash. It messed up three discs in my neck. So if you look down too long, your face goes numb and the I lose the feeling in my arm and then it jacked up my lower back. It made one disc collapse. The other one is bulge. So when I tell you the pain is excruciating, just sitting here hurts. So that's why I don't, you, you may not see me upload for a while. The fact that I suffer from the depression and the pain combined it makes it hard because you can't function when you used to getting up doing stuff. I was I'm I was a USA swim coach. Well, I'm still technically a USA swim coach. I'm a Red Cross water safety instructor, and I was a lifeguard. I love the water. I spent all my time in the water teaching people how to swim, um, coaching swimming, helping triathletes. And when your back is messed up, you can't grab an eight-year-old and pick them up and because you have to maneuver them around. You can't have a four-year-old on this hip and a three-year-old on this hip when you sending one across the pool doing this, that, and the other. It took it messed up my career. I'm used to teaching, you know, six students at a time how to swim or do it. I I can still do my private one-on-one -on -one lessons, but I can't do my group lessons, and that's where the money was. But anyway. So, for people to say that Sheree isn't seriously hurt, I mean, I, I applaud her for going. She did good. Um, I didn't want her to be a drama queen and try to have, like, too much attention on her because we all know Sheree has a tendency and she can do that. So, I'm glad that she didn't do that because, I, like I said, I was afraid that she was. She, um... She killed it, but I, and now I'm going to say this, and I'm not trying to be mean in no way, shape, or form, but I'm going to throw it out there. Regardless of the car wreck or not, Sheree still would have been two hours late because I got to keep it real with you and just say it. Sheree still would have been late. She always late. Everybody always waiting on her, and she got some kind of dramatical reason that she done cooked up, but I'm glad she all right. Now... I can get on to <laughs> other parts of the show. And when the show came on, they had <laughs> Marlo high stepping up in the Nene house with her little boots on. And she said them boots was made for walking. She was killing them boots. They were super cute. All she needed on was her cute little hat that matched her outfit. And she really smashed that look. But she looked too cute. Now, her and Nene being friends, I'm so happy that they are friends again. And I think it was really sweet of Marlo <laughs> to say, you know, I done made up with you. Cynthia done made up with you. Let's just have a tea at my place at the Hamptons, <laughs> at the Marlo Hamptons, and get her and Portia back together, even though Nene didn't want to. I think it was great that Portia did. I'm going to tell you, I'm glad 
that Portia called it what it was when she went into this tea. She said, out of the gate. Nene, I can see right now by the way you acting, by the way you you looking, this ain't even serious. You don't even really care about doing none of this. This just ain't by ish to you. You ain't studying. You don't give two ucks if, if it go or not. You just basically here because they wanted you to be here. So she said, let's just, let's just do this. Let's just agree to, basically she said, let's just agree to disagree. I'm going to be cordial when I see you. It ain't no hard feelings, but I'm not going to keep going over this. And I, Portia is, was, she was so grown up on this show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cause ain't no need to keep hashing going over the same doggone thing. And I'm just to tell you why. Um, I am glad when Nene come in, she did. She she was polite and she spoke and hugged Portia and all of that. And then Marlo wanted to make sure that everybody was going to get along good because she had them sipping vodka and cranberry juice out, out of a teacup. <laughs> had them thinking they was be <laughs> going to be sitting, sitting there with some, some English and chamomile tea to calm their nerves. And she up there getting them lit quick. But, um... Portia didn't want to come, and, and when Portia talked to Nene, she don't be wanting the conversation to keep coming from a bad place and repetitive place and all of that. She really want to talk to her in a calm manner, like you know, just calm. Um, Portia's idea of a friendship is diff apparently is different from Nene's idea of a friendship. Portia's idea of a friendship is I support you. If I if you on TV doing something, I make sure I tweet. I like everything. I discuss everything. Nene's uh, idea of being a friend. If when I text you, you drop everything you doing. It don't matter that you got a life. If I text you, jump when I say jump. They got two different ideas of friendship. I do feel like Portia was being a supportive friend because that's what a supportive friend would do, you know. And I feel like at the same time she was being a supportive friend of Nene. Nene. Let me say this. Nene gonna try to redirect this whole thing back. Talking about Portia. Portia, all I done for you. Portia has acknowledged what Nene has done for her. Nene tried to redirect this off the matter at hand. This whole situation is about what Nene said on Watch What Happens Live. Nene tried to redirect this whole thing back on some text messages back way back when. Like, I text you, you didn't text me back. It, that was so childish and petty to me because I'm going to tell you, I'm a grown ass woman and I got a life. And every time somebody texts me, I'm not going to drop what I'm doing. And I, I may read the text and I'll be like, let me finish this and I'm going to text back. And I may forget the text back, okay? But that's not, that's everybody. That is everybody, and for Nene to try to bring that up and use that as an excuse to still be mad and redirect the conversation off the matter at hand is wrong. The matter at hand is you said what you said or watch what's happened last. No, Nene did, did not say fire Portia, but she did refer to, she she answered the question, which was if you go, if you had two people to to get rid of or fire, whatever the question was, who would it be? And she said um, freaking fraud, which was Portia and Phaedra. So, yeah, you did say she needed to go. You didn't say outright fire her, but this is what this whole tea was about for y'all to make up on. You redirected her off of something else. Then you had the nerve to say, Portia just wanted to be right. No, Nene just wanted to be right. That's why you changed the whole course of the conversation, the whole thing. We Not once did I hear the matter at hand. So that let me know right there. You trying to be right. You want her to come in there, kiss your ass, and say, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Uh, Nene, I need you in my life. I appreciate everything. But she already said she appreciate everything she done. How many times can somebody say thank you? And that's something I like about Portia. She done told you she, thank you. She appreciates you. She's not going to let you keep hanging over her head and keep going on about it because she over it. How many times can you say thank you to somebody for doing something? She done said it and acknowledged it. What else do you want her to do? Nene need to get out of that. 
Because it's some straight up BS. And I'm here to tell you it's some straight up BS. Okay, the next thing that happened was the old lady gang. They done rolled up in the restaurant to get Todd and Candy together about this restaurant. Because they tired of seeing all these bad reviews. Because I've been on some websites. I Googled the restaurant. And they, to me, are... I feel like they have more bad reviews, okay reviews, than they have just excellent. People that are really, really fans, they, they automatically was just happy to be in the presence of Candy and Todd and people they see on TV every day and they gave them a good review but people that are from Atlanta that eat in a lot of restaurants and go from place to place they didn't give some good reviews but I'm proud of the old lady gang for coming through and be like look I name on this if they just thought they was going to use their names and run this restaurant and get them a little piece of check and why they made all this money that wasn't about to happen if my name out here on the line I'm with the old lady gang y'all going to have to get some shit together I agree with everything that they said. If they wanted to look more professional and be more professional. They want the staff to look professional. Because I'm going to be honest with you. When you look at the the restaurant, the staff, the way they dress and carry themselves does not match the ambiance of the restaurant. You need to get both of them on the same level. Candy walking around here dressed to the nines. I don't know if that was just for cameras, but I feel like she'd be cute when she go there anyway because so many people be wanting to take pictures or whatnot. But your staff look busted. I'm just going to say it. It's nothing wrong with them. They need to have on a polo shirt with them two little buttons. And now I'm telling y'all this from a professional standpoint because i've been a, a rest a fast food manager of uh, two or three uh fast food one two three two fast food restaurants but i've worked at three fast three restaurants one of them wasn't fast food you need to look the part they should have on dark color or khaki pants and I'm going to be honest with you, with the ambiance of that restaurant, I would put them in khaki khaki pants. Because that's a pastel pretty restaurant. I wouldn't have them walking around in black. I'll put them in a pastel pants with a polo shirt that's a pretty color. A very beautiful color polo shirt with a name tag. This is how they should be looking. Then they should have a cute apron on. This, is, should, this should be their attire. Or if you want to put them in black, put them in black. But make the apron... You know, have pretty writing on the apron. Like the apron can be black, but the words need to be nice and pretty. Get them together, and I'm with I'm with them. Don't it don't need to be no pants sag. Don't nobody want to get nobody booty. Their clothes need to be pulled up. If you a man, you should be shaved and groomed because you should not have facial hair over food when you preparing it. A woman's hair, if you in the kitchen, it should have a net on it. If you have long hair, it, it has to be pulled up in a bun or some type of way. It should also be things like um, you should have to be clean. We in, in fast food, we didn't do long nails. Them had to be cut down to a minimum because nails carry bacteria and germs. They need to get them together. But I see after they talk to Todd and Candy, they got their butts in there to hire a doggone manager real quick. And then two, pay them. As a fast food worker, a lot of people work how they get paid. If, if they ain't getting paid that much, then they work going to reflect how they getting paid. They should be making $9 an hour minimal there because it's supposed to be upscale. So you should be making a $9 minimum. I'm going to say eight, eight, eight $8 minimum certain positions. So one position may go up to $9, but an $8 minimum, even I hop pay $8. I hop probably... You pay down there nine dollars, so that's what I say nine dollars an hour personally. That's what I think, but anyway, Noel and Cynthia was cute. I like that they are a realistic mom and daughter because you know, when <laughs> Noel did the realistic stuff that your teen daughters do when you get a phone call or whatever, and then after the fact, you know, Cynthia was like, oh yeah, later on you got dishes. Realistic stuff. They ain't acting like... That's one thing I have always liked about Cynthia. She never act too bougie. She always had... She has always kept it real. Then they showed Portia and Ricky smiling. I'm, I'm glad they're keeping it on the professional level. I think they are really cute together, but it always needs to stay professional because I would hate to see anything concerning a relationship mess up their friendship because their friendship looked so cute to me, like I would stay on the friendship level, cause they are so funny together. And professionally, I I had stopped li listening to Ricky Smiley, but I started back listening to him when Portia 
um, started being on the show just because I was interested in how Portia was doing and whatnot. And I have to say that I really like it. And I, and he let me know Dish Nation has no fraternization policy because he said, if you didn't work for Dish Nation, but I still feel like he was just playing. But anyway, Candy and Sheree sat down and had a talk. I like that Candy. <laughs> now, Candy was a bit messy, but not intentionally because she was like, when well, Nene said that he is a, um, what does she call him? That he a um, con artist. And she only had to say that to get to her point. So I can't call her messy, but she did, you know, I don't like when she go back and be like, see, she said, but she, um, got to the point. And this is what I like about Candy because Candy, this is what a good friend does because she went to you and she said, now, many said he's a current artist. Is that true? She went straight to the source. If she wanted to know the truth, she goes to the source and find out the truth. She ain't going to keep gossiping about it or whatever. She going to go to the source and find out. And of course, Sheree was like, no, no, no. And Candy said in that sweet, friendly way. And I love how she did that. You know, she said, okay, girl, because, you know, basically she said, I've been a fool before. I don't want my friend to be a fool because I've been a fool, you know. And I like how she did that. Then let, letting Sheree know, look, I've been a fool before. Open your eyes. Don't be one too, you know, because I've been one. And I like that she did that. And I like how she went about doing that. That's a real friend. Um... And that's just this show to me in a whole. I hope you all, you all enjoyed this review. Be sure to click the like button. Thumbs up. <laughs> this review. And I am eventually moving all these reviews over to just a review channel on this own that I've already opened up. It's called All Things Nail 2. I'm going to leave a subscription button here for it. Be sure that you go on and follow that channel because... Eventually, every re review will be on there. For now, if you don't want to see everything else I do, the hair tutorials, the DIYs, the hauls, none of that, could go over there and I'm going to make a list called Reaction T uh One is called Reactions and the other one is called Reality TV or TV Reactions. It's TV Reactions on that channel, I think. If you click on the TV Reaction button, every video even here will be listed in that playlist. So, you can just watch my reactions and reviews without having to come over here and cipher through the vlogs, the DIYs, the mukbangs, and all the other stuff. So, I thank you for watching. God bless you. You are more than appreciated. And I'll see y'all in the next review.